We're all familiar, I suppose, with some of the general details about the famous crossing of the Delaware by George Washington and his Continental Army, Christmas of 1776. But let me tell you a little incident. Before I do that, let me give you a couple of verses that at first seem to contradict each other by perhaps the two wisest men that ever lived, one far superior than the other. And uh, the first, of course, was uh, Solomon, who is declared to be the wisest man. In Proverbs 27, 1, he says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Now, what seems to be a contradiction to that are the words of the Lord Jesus himself, far wiser than Solomon, a greater than Solomon is here, in Matthew 6, 34, when he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. All right, so the one says, don't boast in tomorrow, and the other one says, don't worry about tomorrow. In other words, don't count on tomorrow to do the things that you're procrastinating to do today. On the other side, the Lord is saying, look, you can't live in tomorrow. You only have today. So don't worry about tomorrow. No one is crushed by the burden of the day. It's when we add yesterday's regrets and tomorrow's worries, that's what crushes us. And so today is the day God has given us. We don't live for the present but we live in the present. We need to be all there and uh, live this day in the light of that day when we will meet the Lord. Now, procrastination is a chronic problem. I face the problem of putting things off, and I almost have to live by deadlines in order to get things done. And Augustine of Hippo said this, God has promised forgiveness to your repentance, but he has not promised tomorrow to your procrastination. So we need to get on with it. And procrastination, as has often been said, is the thief of time. If we keep putting things off, the opportunity passes and we miss out on doing what God has for us to do. Now in the story with uh, George Washington, you know, his ragtag army had been sorely tried. It was hungry. They were tired. And yet here, in a sleet and snowstorm, they're battling their way across the Delaware in open boats in the middle of the night. And uh, Washington's plan is to attack a group of Hessians. These were uh, German uh, soldiers who, they were mercenaries who were fighting for the British. And they've been given the responsibility of protecting the city of Trenton, New Jersey. They were under the command of Johann Rall, who was a not a, a nobleman. He was a commoner, but well respected by his men. And they had been quite harried themselves. And they actually were less of them than there was of Washington's army. It was Christmas, and they didn't expect in this horrible weather that Washington would get his troops across or that he would attack. And so they were at ease on this Christmas day. But um, about three in the morning, Washington's troops arrived on the other side of the Delaware. And uh, it was about nine miles march to Trenton. And they arrived just at dawn, eight o'clock. They arrived, set up two arms that were to attack from two different directions. And, um, and so the battle began. Well... What had happened, which caused the turning of the tide, was that the evening before, Colonel Rall had been at a local merchant's house, a man named Abraham Hunt, and he'd been playing cards. And there was a loyalist, that is someone who was loyal to the British. His name was Moses Doan. He had come across the river. He had heard about uh, Washington's planned attack. And he came to the home, found out where Rall was, came to the home, slipped a note to the servant who brought it to Rall, and rather than interrupting his card game, Rall slipped it into his pocket. He did not read the note. 
And so they were totally unprepared for the attack. And in this attack, about 900 Hessians were captured and Rawl himself was mortally wounded. When the doctor was cutting away his clothes to try and staunch the wound, he discovered the note. And Rawl said, if I had read this, I would not be here. Putting it off for a card game. And this was the beginning of what is called the 10 Crucial Days. This was the turning of the tide of the Revolutionary War and largely can be traced back to his procrastination in reading that little note that would have marshaled his troops and perhaps had changed the course of history. We never know from one day to the next what opportunities we will have. A little word in the gospel, a word of comfort, a word of encouragement, a little kindness shown that seems like a little thing, but very often little things that are hinges to very big things. And God help us then to buy up every opportunity, to redeem the time, because the days are evil. We know that. The majority of our days are filled with things that are not of eternal value. And we need to look for the gems, gather these golden opportunities, and use them for the glory of God. Do not boast about tomorrow, and do not worry about tomorrow. You don't know what a day will bring forth, but you do know that today its trouble is sufficient, and there's no reason to be putting off till tomorrow what we should do today, and there's no reason borrowing the worries of tomorrow and bringing them into today. God help us to live every day for his glory and to find the advantages and not procrastinate and miss out on some turning of the tide that could have a significant change if only we had not procrastinated.